I got interested in this study um, because for a couple of reasons. One is because of my strong interest in um, drugs and uh, how we use medicines and how to use them better. And um, I'm interested specifically, especially because I'm a pediatrician, in how we use um, antibiotics uh, specifically because it's such an important issue in our country right now and even worldwide. Bacterial um, organisms are becoming increasingly resistant to antibiotics and it's happening faster than we can develop new antibiotics to treat them. And um, the more we use antibiotics, the faster the bacteria get resistant to them. So it's really a, a, a public health crisis. And if we can decrease um, unnecessary antibiotic use, we can save antibiotics as long as possible for when they're needed. The findings of our study were really two main areas. Um, first of all, um, we found that um, it's reassuring that um, we don't need to use antibiotics for people with common colds. We know that antibiotic, that common colds are usually caused by viruses and the viruses don't respond to antibiotics. But despite this, about half the time, the doctor in the United States prescribes an antibiotic for a common cold. And um, we think this is probably because people are worried that the cold is going to um, progress in, in, to a more serious bacterial illness. And we found from our study that um, that common colds, while doctors um, prescribe antibiotics for a little over half the common colds, um, these were very, very unlikely to um, progress into a more serious bacterial infection. And this is reassuring that we don't, it's safe to not use antibiotics for these illnesses. The other part of my, um, of this study was that we looked at um, adverse events or side effects that happen after an antibiotic is used. Um, many times if something bad happens after a drug is used, people attribute that to the antibiotic. They say it's, it's a causal relationship. And um, what we wanted to get a, a better idea of um, exactly what the risks were of um, prescribing antibiotics, exactly what the risks were of serious um, side effects. And um, we found that um, we compared similar patients, patients with common colds, who received antibiotics and who didn't receive antibiotics. And we found that um, there was no in increased risk of these bad side effects that we were looking for. So we think a lot of the time, or at least some of the time, that a bad side effect is attributed to an antibiotic some of that might be um, related to the patient's um, underlying condition, or maybe that bad thing would have happened whether or not the uh, patient received the antibiotic. We were somewhat surprised with the first result that um, we need to treat um, so many patients in order to avoid one hospital admission for pneumonia, for example. And um, we thought it would even be fewer than that. We were surprised at, at how little antibiotics really, really helped. We thought there would be even a little bit of a greater risk for the common cold to progress into a bacterial infection. And then really the, the risk was much smaller than, than we thought. But, um, the other thing is, I think we thought there would be a small risk of these adverse events or these drug side effects after, after the antibiotics were used, but with millions of office visits, we weren't able to show that there was an increased risk of these bad side effects. Um, and I guess we were surprised about that too. It reinforces that um, we need to be careful when we think that something's caused by something. We need to look and see maybe there's another, another thing that can explain it. It's taken a long time for um, research to have made uh, influence on antibiotic prescribing. But um, because of publication of studies like mine and because of public health campaigns, our antibiotic prescribing, our unnecessary antibiotic prescribing has uh, decreased in the United States, but it could still stand to decrease 
a lot more. Um, certainly, I think people should prescribe antibiotics when they're indicated and when they can be helpful. Um, but I think we can do a lot more to decrease our um, um, unnecessary use. And, and I think that, um, I don't think it's going to happen overnight. I think it's going to be a, a gradual process. Um, and uh, I think it's not just my study that's going to make a difference. It's collectively all the scientists who are working on this and the public health officials who are working on this and um, patients who need antibiotics uh, to be effective in the future and um, physicians and um, who want to be able to prescribe these in the future. I, I, I think it'll be a, a gradual process that will all work together to hopefully continue to improve things. I think we can take a two-pronged approach. One, I think this study and other studies are um, reassuring that it's safe to not prescribe an antibiotics for these um, infections, the common colds that are almost always viral. And um, I think um, patients and um, medical caregivers are increasingly recognizing that. Um, number two, I think that um, there's things that we can do to prevent these um, illnesses to begin with. For example, um, people could get the uh, influenza vaccine and that'll, pre that'll prevent one kind of viral illness. So I think that there's, I think that um, there are things that we're gradually learning that, that will help with our antibiotic needs and our antibiotic uh, decision making. I think the results of the study can really help uh, decision making about antibiotic use. Um, I think it'll um, reassure us that, and that it's safe to not use antibiotics for these um, common colds, which are um, almost always caused by viruses which don't respond to antibiotics. And I think that um, I, I think that it'll help make people more uh, comfortable with that. And um, then again, we can um, it'll help us make our use of antibiotics more um, uh, judicious and help preserve antibiotics benefits for the future.